Let's. Well, we made it out to Texarkana, Arkansas, to the KOA camp here. And uh, we met some neighbors next to us, and they have built their own camper. And I'll let, uh, I'll let Grandma Donna tell you how we got over and been able to talk to them. Okay. Well, first of all, I uh, haven't done this before. My first time, so I was a little shy walking up to somebody that, was, that I didn't know, not knowing how they would expect receive that maybe they would be a little nervous or something so Sheila had made some brownies so I volunteered them I took them a little thing of brownies over and uh, introduced myself she introduced herself and I said we had some brownies and like to share them she was a little hesitant but her husband jumped right at it he was happy to get those brownies and so with that I turned around and David was approaching with his camera yeah and so that, that was kind of a good icebreaker. And so I, I just asked him if we could have a little demonstration and, and see his little camper there that he had made. Uh, you know, we just thought it was like the neatest thing we ever did see. Uh, <laughs> it was, yeah. And so he was, he was really nice enough to, to give us a little tour of his camper and show us how everything worked. And uh, here it is for you, and I, I think you're going to like seeing it. Hello, Robert. I've just been admiring your little camper here. You want to tell us about what you got here? Yeah, it's uh, home built. I retired last fall and I didn't have anything to do, so I just went out in the garage and started building it. I got about $1,100 in it and change. Uh -huh. And the top slides down and seals against these angles. Now, this right here is a heater and cooler out of a large electric uh, cooler, a uh, chest cooler. Okay. And I put it in the door. It does cool, but in a real hot weather, it doesn't do very well. But the heat is fantastic. It'll heat this thing up no, in little or no time. Of course, I got my towels up there right now. Let me pull them down so you can see the beds. Got a bed in the bottom. So my wife sleeps. I sleep on top. Uh -huh. We got a chest cooler, which a small one. This came out of a big one. Got a porta potty here in the corner, and that's a stove. Uh, what do they call them? Not propane, but. Uh, Butane. Butane. Okay. Yeah, a little butane stove. And we keep some odds and ends in there in case uh -huh. we get stuck where we can't get out to go to a restaurant. Uh, it's all 12 volt except for this one strip, it's 110. Like right now, that is running. And it's plugged in my three 12 volts. My battery is down here. These are my drawers we keep things in. And my wife wanted a small countertop to make sandwiches on in case it's raining real bad and we sit in here. Right, right. Now, this top folds up. And I have a hook there and one there. Of course, there's one on each side. Uh -huh. And that gives you a place to sit down and you can put a lot of stuff behind here so it's none that's on the bed here because your couch. Now right. this right here is 32 inches deep, 20 inches wide, 10 in, or 32 long, 10 inches deep, 20 wide. And this is for our clothes. 
and of course these can be locked right so I'm gonna put this back down and the other mechanism I'll give full credit to my neighbor Roger Dutton for that he figured he gave me the idea then I went with it for <laughs> raising and lowering it yeah yeah that's what I was seeing that I thought was really neat mm -hmm. What I did is this is called lock and tackle. Uh -huh. And if it had two pulleys, it would be called a different type, but this is a gun. And you will see when we let it down that I wind it up on a pulley here. And this is a three to one ratio, and the pulley winds it up, and it comes up over that and on this. And uh -huh. this right here is fastened to the top. This is to the pipe that's on the bottom. And when it comes down, it just works. All you have to do is make sure that it's balanced. Okay. And I lost the cover on this side somewhere in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the windows I got on the internet, just about everything that is in here, 12 volt, I was off the internet. But I have a friend, he made a sliding door for his house. And he didn't want one that would roll, it's going down. He didn't want it to roll down, he wanted it to stay. So he took a piece of three quarter inch pipe and he took a piece of one inch plastic pipe. And he made a system similar to this, except the pipe is running horizontal and the slide is on top and he used the plastic like this for bushings right yeah so i stole his idea uh -huh. and put it on here <laughs> and of course on the other side i have uh, the cover and i also have a shut off my battery 12 volt battery uh -huh. in here is charged by the truck battery all i gotta do is turn it on when i'm driving it charges shut it off and it won't drain my truck battery down. right right Anyways, I guess I'm ready to lower it down. Okay, so. we'll take a look around the front too. <sighs> yeah, I didn't think I'd be a movie star. Well, how about that? <laughs> you never know what'll happen. <laughs> well, you want to crank her down, Dad? up a little more Pat. I have three sticks and that is what holds it up and holds it in place. And they set inside here. Uh-huh. And the reason I use three is for in engineering purposes whenever you do anything is you do a datum plane. Four will rock. Three won't. In the old days, they called it the bar stool theory. Three bar, three legged right. bar stools won't rock. Right. That's the same way here. Okay. Okay. Let her down. I have it so that when it's down I can still open the door oh, rubber that's seal nice. yeah so you don't have to raise it up to get anything in there no nope. you just have to bend over yeah and there you go look at that you know what I did was really stupid and I do this every now and again Okay. 
almost left at one time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just sits in like so. Yeah, and if you're like me, I'd have to go buy another ladder because I can't climb up in a bed of my truck without a one. <laughs> <laughs> we put a bicycle chain around there. We never used to have any problems, but things are not like they used to be. I always afraid somebody would make one more like a big sand. Well, thank you for filming me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, there is, there is just one more thing with this. Oh, my wife got it on already. Set of straps. Just as it goes. Just to make yep. sure you got that brace there. Okay, now I now I see how this all works in. So now when it's down, and that gives you like your air deflection on the front. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Okay. Right. And uh, this weighs about 700 pounds. About 700 pounds. That's not bad. And I have a V6 in this, a 3.7. Normally empty, the truck makes 18. Uh huh. With this on here, we made as high as 17. Depending upon the gas yeah. and where we're traveling, but normally it averages to 14 and 16. Nice, nice. All right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank well, that was interesting to see, wasn't it? Uh, it's, it's just always so interesting to see the different things that people come up with and, and the way they uh, find their own little niche on what works best for them for being able to go out there and, and travel and be able to see things. Uh, it's, it's just always fascinating to see what people come up with. And when I was talking to her, she was telling me how she was so happy that we came over and talked to him and let him show us his little camper because she said every time they go to a filling station or campgrounds, he's always anxious for someone to come up and look at, look at what he's done and, and be able to explain it to them. And he's so proud and when someone doesn't do it, then he's very disappointed. They started out with a larger camper at one time and they've kind of worked their way down. And she said they're really glad they did that because they just were in Arizona and the, the going up through the mountains and, and the high spots were so uh, very sharp curves and turns that they know they couldn't have done it with the last um, camp RV that they had. And so that's why they've gone down to this size. They've worked down very slowly. So they've been doing RVN for a long time. But he's very, very proud of this, and he should be, because, and they still have more that they plan to do. They explain to us all that stuff, which you probably saw on this, so. But it was nice, it was a nice experience. Yeah, yeah. He was telling me, you know, about how this gets so much better gas mileage and they're able to to just be able to go out much farther you know with him just newly retired he's he's got more time now and they're they're really really able to enjoy life now with their their new little camper that they've got that's nice to see. all right well thanks for watching make sure you hit the subscribe and we'll see you next time bye, bye.